Okay, well we're going to uh, take a look at the dipping layer reflection problem now, and we're going to, our starting point is, prob is probably a little bit different than what you've encountered in, in most text. We're going to come back to a feature or a characteristic of the um, critically refracted ray problem for the dipping layer that we didn't address, and that is what is the critical distance. And uh, we know that we have uh, you know, a reflection for reflection paths, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, and that at the critical angle we begin to see the first critically refracted ray, but at the same time we also see a, a coincident uh, reflection event. So coming up to this point on the surface, uh, which we call the critical distance or the minimum distance uh, for the uh, arrival uh, location, source receiver location of the first recorded critically refracted ray. So um, to do this problem, remember back to when we talked about the uh, horizontal, horizontal layer reflection problem that we took advantage of the idea of, a, of an image point or an image source, and we created the image uh, uh, point. Uh, the image point lies along an extension of a line from the source drawn normal to the reflector surface and extended an equal distance beyond this interface uh, on the opposite side of the, uh, of the reflector. So we're going to make use of this uh, image point idea again, uh, dealing with the uh, reflection problem from the dipping layer. So take a moment. Uh, if you have a text handy, uh, you may want to uh, review the approach to the solution of the horizontal layer reflection problem. So again, the, uh, the image point, uh, an extension of a line uh, drawn normal to the reflector surface and extended an equal distance beyond that reflector, so we have the image point here, and we know that, and, and we, you can see that we have a triangle here, and we know that the reflection path, the reflection path length uh, that we have going from the source down to the reflection point, back to a receiver at the surface, we know that the length of that path is equal to is identical to the length of a line drawn from the image point to the reflector on the surface. So that makes this an easy problem that we took advantage of when we were working with the horizontal layer. We want to figure out what the path length is, what the uh, travel time is. We take advantage of the image point. That simplifies the, uh, uh, the math a little bit for us. Made it a little bit easier problem to solve. Now uh, we can see that we don't have a right uh, triangle. Uh, we have um, th this side again is h, so that th this uh, uh, the length of this side here is 2h. So we know the length of this side. We don't know the length of the travel path. We don't know x critical. So. Uh, we do know that this is theta critical, and that this must be theta critical. And if we assume that we know what the dip is, and what theta critical is, and what h is, how are you going to determine x crit, the uh, critical distance? Well, just taking a look at this triangle here, we could come back and use the law of the signs. Um, we know, for example, looking at this uh, triangle here, that uh, uh, the ratio of A over the sine of this angle is equal to the ratio of B over the sine of this angle, and so on. So can we use that to solve this problem? Well, let's take a look at it. We've just repeated that uh, uh, sine law over here. We've got this side of the triangle. We know what uh, theta critical is, so we know what this angle is. Uh, we have these two perpendicular lines, we have these two perpendicular lines, so we know that this line must make an angle delta with this line, because these two lines are perpendicular. So we have delta over here, we know that this is a right angle, 
So we have pi over 2. And so we know that this angle is pi over 2 plus delta. So we have um, two angles, pi over 2 plus delta plus theta critical. Can we do it? We know that this angle is pi over 2 minus delta minus theta critical because we know the sum of all three angles must be equal to pi. So the sum of these three angles, if you, you think about that, it's going to be equal to uh, 2 pi over 2, or pi, 180 degrees. So we have all three angles now. We have one side. And uh, now if we assume that uh, delta, the uh, dip is equal to 20 degrees, that the critical angle is equal to 41.8 degrees, and then can we solve for x crit? Well, we can use this relationship over here. We know that x crit over the sine of theta critical, just kind of looking at this uh, triangle over here, that would give us x crit over the sine of theta critical is equal to 2h over sine of pi over 2 minus delta minus theta critical. That's the ratio of this side to this angle. So we're basically taking the ratio of the length of a side to the uh, the angle that it subtends, more or less. So, uh, so we have these relationships, and you can see that we can solve for x critical if we know what the thickness of the layer is. And in this case, we'll use a thickness of 30 meters. And so it's easy to uh, then go on from there to figure out that the critical distance is 84.68 meters. So we know what the distance is now, we know what the side of the triangle is, but what is t crit in order to figure out what the critical, what the arrival time at the critical distance is for the reflection event and the first critical refraction? We need to know the length of this path. So how do we figure that out? And remember, uh, again, just to be a little bit redundant here, that the length of this side of the triangle from the image point up to the receiver is equal to the length of the reflection path. So if we know the reflection path length and we know the velocity, then we should be able to determine uh, the time it takes to get to the uh, critical point. So we've got uh, our various givens here and we, we need to solve for the uh, critical angle. Uh, we now have another side. We know what the angle is that this side subtends. So the reflection path length, which we'll abbreviate, is RPL. We have RPL over sine pi over 2 plus delta. That's uh, this angle here. Should be equal to the length of this side over the sine of this angle. So we have the reflection path length, just rearranging terms here. And uh, solving for the sine, we get uh, it's equal to 0.94 times 2h over 0.47. Turns out to be very close to 4h or 120. That would be 120 meters in this case. So the critical distance then will use a velocity of uh, 3,000 meters per second. Uh, the critical, uh, the critical time rather, the arrival time of the reflection at the critical point would be 0 0.04 seconds. So we figured out the critical distance, we figured out the critical time, 0 0.04, and uh, so we've, we've uh, uh, filled in one point though, so we're kind of limited in what we've been able to accomplish. We've calculated the uh, arrival time and the distance for one reflection point. That also coincides with the arrival time and distance out to the point of first critical refraction. So, we've got some work to do. And uh, we've got to get all the reflection points here. And we know that the, um, um, the up-dip uh, time-distance relationship for the critical refraction, we're just reproducing that here. Uh, we know that we can get the velocity uh, for the apparent velocity from uh, this uh, critical refraction event. We know what it's equal to. Just, just a reminder there. We can also get V1 
And this is just a reminder because we know that we have to actually do reversed uh, profiling. We have to shoot both in the forward and the reverse direction in order to get the V2. But in this particular case, we only need the V1. We can get the V1 from our direct arrival. So we need reflection times in general. How are we going to go about it? Um, we saw for one reflection point. Uh, doesn't work well in general, does it? Uh, we've, we've used the law of signs to help us uh, solve that problem. That was a fairly specific problem because we knew what theta critical was. And uh, we're kind of left with uh, doing what, and I'll use this nomenclature, which you've probably heard before, doing the uh, forward problem. So if we know what, if we can understand what the forward uh, result is, in other words, what the reflection event should look like, then we should be able to figure out how to extract some information from uh, those observations. And we usually have shot data, and we work backwards. And that process is referred to as doing the inverse problem. So for the next time, we've just kind of set things up and uh, been kind of a little tease there, going over some uh, basic ideas, but for the next time, consider how you would approach the general problem of determining reflection travel time as a function of source receiver offset distance x. So in other words, solve the forward problem, and then we'll talk about the inverse problem, how we can take a data set uh, where we don't really know what the dip is, we don't know what the thickness of the layer is and work backward to that information. But in order, in order to do that, we need to be able to solve the uh, forward problem first and figure out what the reflection event should look like from a dipping layer. So thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.